Good evening. No, there's the camera. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Artwood Turning in the Stable Studio. This evening I have got some Hallions in the background, and I mean Hallions. Surprise guest tonight. Well, he's not really surprised. We've got Mark Beckett back again, look. Hey! Hi, everyone. And Pete from Twisted Trees. Hi, everyone. And, and the lovely Joe. Good evening. Apparently, and of course, uh, of shocking, course. Shocking news, Brian. Pete and I aren't allowed to play with you anymore. Oh. According to your wife. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, this, this would be because of the tools. Yeah. <laughs> Stool pigeons, both of them. Stool pigeons. It was me secretly buying extra new tools, and what did they get? Shop to it. Well, I told Mr. the chat not to tell me, shall. Mr. Pete said, instantly, instantly, I had pressed the button on the new tools. Instantly, he put it in the chat. Friends like that, who needs enemies? Get in the background. Go on, get. So I'm enjoying my cup of tea and my matching mug. Look, matching today. <laughs> So tonight, in honour of, uh, we've got this piece of wood tonight. Let me have a look. Let me just pop this on here. This piece of wood. Oh, wait a minute. We'll get rid of the cuddly wally. I'll use that later. Was that for scale? This, this, that was just for scale, yeah? Oh, so it's this, smaller than it used to be then? Yeah, cuddly wallies are much smaller than they used to be. So this piece of wood, just for... Uh, is, oh, what is that? Nearly 10 inches, it is 10 inches at its widest point. And it is approximately four inches deep at its deepest point, which is here, but there's another uh, thinner bit down here. It's an elm burr. I know he's getting sick looking at me turning burrs, I know. I did one two weeks ago. Right, the plan for this one is I have it mounted on a faceplate ring. I actually had to plane this flat in the back because it was kind of humped. That's Richard Phelan's fault. He he processed it. He's in the chat. I know he is. That's why I said <laughs> it. had a bit of a hump on the back, so I had to plane it to make it smooth. Mounted a faceplate ring because I don't trust... Um, what do you call them things? Woodworm screws. Woodworm screws, yeah. Now, I've got some rings on the inside. This is going to be the size of the bowl in here, just next to the ring. And then there are a double line just about here, which will be a bead eventually. So let's get this on the lathe and see how we go. Richard, I, Richard Phelan, I suggest that you actually, any time you take Brian Wood now, just take him the lumpy stuff. Yeah, lumpy stuff, yeah. I like the lumpy stuff. <laughs> not, not stuff like Z tons, but lumpy stuff make would it, be all right. Make it work for it. I'm just going to use the tailstock temporarily. Let's push it out a wee bit. I've no intentions of making this round. But what I do want to do is I want to bring this out and make a mortise in the bottom. So I'll need to lose a bit off the bottom here first. But I'm going to make this a little bit shaped in here. And then we're going to leave a lip on the outside. So we'll need to lose a little bit from the top end from here to make it dead straight. And then we'll have a lip about this much, about 10 mil or so, and then curve down towards the bottom. And we'll do an inwards curve, a concave curve. I'm going to stick my face shield on for this one. Because it, being a bar, there's whole lots of bits on it. I tried to pick it off. I um, tried to pick the bark off, but it wasn't coming off, so I gave up. So we'll fly everywhere just in a moment. We'll use the big tool rest, I think. Who's going to read the chat out then? Anybody that wants. Go on then, Mark. Okay, well, as is my usual pattern. I need to take this away first. There's a big lot I shall read well. from the list of participants provided by you two. So we've got Alex of Wooden Things, Copper Owl Wood Turning, door 60. Douglas Mungham, Jared the French Turner. Grandpa Jim Woodturner, Greg Alexander, Jennifer's Craft and Creations, John Scarborough, Keith Jarvis, Lawrence Picaja, Michelle Higgins, Michelle Lusby, Neil M, Nigel Foster, Norman Greenwell, Paul Finley Woodturning at home, Paul Newton, the Greasby Turner, Richard Phelan, 
Roger Kent, Steve Hale, Susie Wiss, Swiss Woodturner, Terry Bartlett, Lewis the Klondike Grassman, Dr. Glenn Cove Woodworks, Tony Smith, Trevor P. Obby Turner, Trevor Reed, Wee Val, Wavy Woodshed, Wouldn't It Be Nice, Woodwork Learner. Welcome one and all. Welcome one and all. Welcome everybody. If, Thank you all for coming in. If I missed so, your name, blame you too. Uh, if you missed your name, blame him because he was supposed to be reading it. Oh. Don't be blaming YouTube at all. He's just bluffing there, guys. I'll just lower that tool list a little bit. I'm using a half inch bow gauge and I just want to get this bottom half. We'll leave this top edge, as I said. I'm not going to. We'll leave it cut almost like a natural edge. Of course, it's not natural. It's been cut by a one, so. But I'm going to leave it anyway. So we're just going to nibble away at this gently. And the lathe is only running at 550 reds currently, because it's a little bit off balance. But I've got a good sharp tool. Interesting bit of wood. Really dry. Yeah, it is dry. Yeah. It's absolutely dry. Yeah. And I sharpened this tool before I started. Oops, I can't do that. I need to move that camera out of the way. Let me just move that out of the way for a second. Bring up my tool posts. Just want to have a look at that and bring this tool rest in a bit. Norman Greenwell's in the chat, and so is a tick magnet head shaper. Mm, that's a new name. I from Ed Shaper. Shaper. Yep. Shaper. Shaper. Mm. Can't wait. To see what Brian makes today. Well, I, I say this could be a two-part. The, the bit I forgot to show you it was the lid that maybe oh, we might be making for this. JP Woodworks just joined. Hi, JP. Hi, JP. How are you doing, buddy? Uh, Woodwork Learner's asking if I'm going to sing. That I do not know. This is entirely possible. I need a haircut. Dave Oates has got a question. Is it early? Is it too early to start? Hashtag get Brian to turn resin. <laughs> Yes, it is. No, you carry on with that if you want to. So now we're getting down to solid wood, if you like. Barry's Wood Creations is in. Good evening, Barry. And uh, because this is a burr, the the normal rules of cutting uphill and cutting downhill don't really apply because it's kind of all over the place. But it's nice looking, I have to say. Pretty looking wood. It is a very pretty bit of wood. Ed Wilson's in. Hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. Good evening, Ed. Right, so I'm just going to take us on a little bit more. A little bit more in this direction. I'll let you see it from there. See what you think of that piece of wood. There you go. Not very washed out or something on that screen, though. No? It's a little bit uh, less detail than you're getting, but we can see what it is. So we're just going to make this and give myself a little bit more lip here, so that it looks like it's supposed to be there. <coughs> I'm going to try and turn the speed up a little bit. Roger Kent's asking Brian, what tools did you buy? Oh, uh, well, it's just replacement parts, uh, mostly. I bought some, a uh, couple of Simon Hope six mil cutters. Um, uh, sanding, pads. sanding pads and. Arbors for the inertia sander. I know Dave Oti, he didn't spend any of £100 on resin. Is that Dave Oti in the chat? Yep. He is. Welcome okay. along, Dave. 
Steve Bryce has just joined and James Crawford. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, they're all starting it. Hashtag get Brian to turn resin. Brian. Ooh. I want to watch the two hour live art. Was a Brian clearing up from turning resin? If I, if I turn resin, if I turn resin, there's a definitely if there, there will be a follow up video of cleaning up. And you all have to watch it. There will be no excuses. <laughs> Woodwork learner saying that he'll be moving a bit further away from from me in a few weeks. Oh, that's a shame, Andy. You look to Andy, so nice. Where could be nicer than Scarborough? Australia. Oh, apart from there. Yeah, it's a little bit further away. The Namibian Desert. Oh dear. It's a bit warm. Moscow. Anywhere could be nicer than Scarborough. <laughs> hey! Don't knock it. It's, an, it's not a bad place. I've been to Scarborough. Well, I suppose. Might be a long time before I go back again. Fair <laughs> enough. What? JP is saying <clears throat> it's just so this pro that, edge. That did somebody say so Go on. What? Go on. I seen somebody said something about Mr. Blue Mouse. You mean Maurice? Lewis. This is Maurice. Maurice the mouse. <laughs> Who lives on my left. That's better. That's Grandpa right. Jim says, so not really new tools. Does that really count? No, it doesn't. Whatever you spend Michelle. on consumables is like, yeah, it's got to be spent. Brian, Michelle wanted me to tell you Matthew is <coughs> on his way. <coughs> oh, that's good. Just got my 3 8 ball, guys, just to get this bottom here so I can think about doing a. And those are randomly posted, Morris. Boris? Uh, yeah. Now, JP it's not an English mice, so right? I don't have English mice. You know me, I don't really like the English. I can't help it, though. That's not true, guys. I do. I quite do. I do quite like English. All my friends seem to be English. Well, that's good. Well, that's good. JP has said that he's just saw this pro edge and all his gouges. That's because he that's doesn't use any gouges. He only uses easy wood tools. Didn't see them one for sale anywhere. No. Jay Scott Creations has joined us. He said, hey, I'm not late to the party for a change. Hello, everyone. Yeah, it does make a change right enough. You're usually always late. Well, you got Susie. Susie's in. Hi, Susie. Evening, Glenn. Hi, Glenn. Even, evening, Glenn. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Susie. Well, Susie's been in for ages, actually. I know. i just seen her name there. I just looked up at the screen. I thought I'd say hello. <coughs> Dave Oti is saying, I wonder if I kidnap the mouse <laughs> and blackmail Brian to turn resin for his safe return. <laughs> Wouldn't Ooh, work. He's got 2,000 of the damn things now. They keep breeding. Hodgepodge says, I heard Carwin say that the wood disc there on the headstock has voided your warranty. The wood on the headstock has voided my warranty. What wood disc this? No, the wood disc on the on the uh, cover. Oh, this? Yeah. It's it hasn't it hasn't uh, replaced the cover whatsoever. The cover's still underneath it. No, uh, it's still voided. No. I'll argue that until the cows come home. Ooh. I would say the warranty's void anyway because it's too clean. Katie Cornish made 1982. Is it? Hi, Katie. Hi, Hi Katie. Katie. Right, I'm just going to try and take a bit of a finishing cut here. It's been a while since I've been able to say hello to you. Lewis has posted oh. a correction. He said, people, get it correct. Hashtag Morris wants Brian to turn resin. Oh. Maurice. I'm only reading out what oh, I did. Oh, I can't Morris. change it. Not much point in employing you, earworms. You can't even back me up. 
I'll maybe rephrase that. Employee is maybe too strong a word. <laughs> I was going to say, employee would sort of imply that you're paying us. Let's <laughs> have so a look and see that. Oh, that's nearly too hollow. I'll be all right. It'll sit on its rim then, won't it? Right, let's do a little um, little mortis thing. What size do I need a mortis? I need uh, 54 mil. Brian? Yes, ma'am. Uh oh. Oh. Is that the first one or the second one? Second. Oh, yeah, I've slowed down a bit, big lad. It's only quarter past. <laughs> yeah, but you made me start early. I didn't make you start early. You oh. did. You told me I was going to get a glass. Don't, oh, that's true, I did I? Would you believe he was, was... turned up in one of my lives going to drink out of a tin? I mean. Um, it was just asking, is that wood pink? Is it pink? Or is it the camera? It's, well, as they know, there is a pink tinge to it in places. Pinkish here and pinkish up here. It's, it's Ash, a guy his shed has turned up. Hi, Clash. Ash. Hi, Ash. Hi, Ash. Right, now I need to try and get a decent cut on this bit. The bottom's... Yes, okay, it's more. me. I better make a tenon. I better make a mortar, should say. Keep calling that a tenon. You know why that is? Because I watched... Um, Tim Yoder today, and he, he spent the whole his whole life or his whole video calling a mortis a tenon. Ah, he's got me at it. Yeah, at it. it's an age thing. It's an age thing. So about a four mil tenon should do. I think four or five mil. There we go. It's very similar to. Uh... Wood turners who consistently use the red button to start a lathe and the green button to try and stop it. Mm, that's um, a nice thing too. Yeah. Not not guilty. <laughs> much. Rubbish. <laughs> not guilty much. Mind the right camera, huh? You are. I think I must have done it at least five times today. <laughs> Dewey Shedson. Good evening, Dewey. Uh, Andy Woodward Learner said, Brian, do you use a toothbrush to clean that lathe? Yes, nope. I can confirm he does. It's Michelle when she's at work and he puts it back after. Yeah, doesn't tell her though. Don't tell her. Lucy's saying I'd consider taking the inclusions out of that. What inclusions? Yeah, he wants, he wants you to take them out by filling them with resin. Well, that was a cunning and devious ploy of Mr. Lewis. A nice little mortise. And I'm going to do the sensible thing today. Go check, see if it fit. This is, not, this is not like me. That's a good plan. Oh, look at that. Dewey sheds in. Look at that, that's perfect. Good. Let's leave now, Ben. Dewey. Did you? Sorry. I did. No worries. Good turning spy <laughs> barriers. I only said that so I could uh, say that I'm putting this yeah. back on my chuck buddy now. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's do something with the outside edge and make that nice and smooth before we have to sand it and then try and do something with this edge. Uh, so I'll just use my, no, I'll use a 3 8 bog, 3 8 bog gauge. Yeah, There's a big inclusion here, which is a problem when you're trying to cut, because it kind of bounces off it. So this might never be a really good cut, but we'll give it a go. No, we won't. We had better uh, turn the tool rest first. Eh? Something like that. Ben Jamin's in. Hi, Ben. Good evening, Welcome Ben. along with you. Where have you been? Good day for watching. Oh, thanks, guys. I appreciate. I really do appreciate that. Robert's just saying that bowl would look a lot better on a set of O'Donnell jewels. Who said that? Watch, watch. Robert. Watch, watch. 
I might. I haven't got one. Eighty nine. Watching. And I'll have to say the price of, of, of a Donald Joss. I'd have to start a GoFundMe page to buy a set. So I'm trying to get a nice crisp a, line in here. I got a set. I wouldn't be without them. Yeah, we know you've told me off, man. No. Jamie, Jamie said, uh, go fund me, page or a shed fund. Shed <laughs> Oosh, Don't mention the shed fund. Oof. Oof. A little too much, just a bit there from Let's try and get rid of that. <laughs> I can't believe you said that, JP. <laughs> oh, yes, I can. Funny, funny how that's disappeared. It's JP, of course you can believe he said it. Let's not get controversial, eh? Dave Osi said, question, question. Which will come first, Brian with the new SK100 trucks or him turning resin? Um, he doesn't need SK100 trucks. He needs Axminster's... SK114, apparently. Yeah. Apparently, that's what I need. I can't do without it, apparently. I mean, I don't know. Well, it's still got to be too much. Just, it's hard to see too much in this, guys. But there's one just right there. I can feel it. See, there wouldn't be any tomorrow if you had SK SK one one four. Yeah, right. SK one one four is making you an infinitely better turner. You boys don't have toxic some rubbish. <laughs> I was actually going to make this a convex shape. Why am I making it concave or concave? I was going to make it concave, not convex. But sure, that's all right. I like that. Lewis says, pieces like this is why everyone should have a coring tool. I know. Yeah. It's kind of waste, isn't it, really? I was going to say something then, but I won't. <laughs> no. Yeah, is yours not arrived yet? No. Oh, dear, I think that's lost in the post. I don't say that. It was lost in France. Right, sand it. So the bit I forgot to tell you about was this bit. I'll have to show you this piece. This is going to be a lid. Or this bowl. Right, let's uh, reverse mount this. No, let's sand it first. Sanding first. No, she gets says. Uh, oh, sorry. Go on. JP uh, it said Brian will be turning loads of resin on the Easy Wood stand up makers. Come over and have a go. You might just like it. Not a chance, JP. <laughs> There's says, two reasons. Go ahead. That's it with some meths, Brian. That'll highlight the tool marks. Meths? Tool marks? What tool marks? I don't have tool marks. How very dare you. Right, I think I could remove the face mask and just put my uh, safety specs on now. I'm sweating underneath that thing. In fact, I might have to turn my heater down. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. You know what? I might turn mine off as well, I reckon. No, it's very yeah, warm in here. Up, get, get a bit warm in here. I'll turn it down to two. That'll be better. <sighs> Could be. I actually need, a, actually need a little drink of tea. Just. <laughs> How about your workshop, yeah, you Mark? Can... Is that warming yeah. up as well? <sighs> the sigh. The sigh. <laughs> I don't oh, speed down a bit. turn that heat. Turn our eating down, it's getting too tropical in here. Put the extractor on. It's getting too tropical. Yeah. You're all very funny. <laughs> I'll buy you some mittens for Christmas. You should buy them a set of heated gauntlets. You know the ones that run off 12 volts. Yeah. Put a three pin plug and put it in the 240. Yep. Dave Oti said, Question, question. Would Mark's workshop be cold by any chance? Well, Dave Oti would know how cold my workshop is because he lives about 20 miles away. So go stand outside, mate. 
That's as cold as my workshop is. Blazing. How do you all? Just got back from the dentist. Wimper. Good darn. I hate and Seth from Brickhouse Crossworks has joined us. Good evening. I hate the Hi, dentist. Hi, Seth. I actually hate the dentist. Not the dentist per se. Not not any individual dentist. Just dentistry and and. Grandma Ruth tubes in. Bye. Hi, Ruth. How you doing, babes? She's asking where Tell did you get the wood that you were turning? Where's uh, I got this from? Richard Phelan. My my uh, um, I, I tend to call him my wood supplier. It's almost like a drug dealer, if you like. <laughs> you have some really nice pieces of wood, I have to say. So, Grandma Ruth's in tonight to give us some dirt and low down on Terry, because Terry's not available tonight. He's away. Yep, so he can't ah. defend himself. So he can't defend himself, so he can let a, let a few cats out of the bag that we can arm ourselves with so as we can give him some abuse the next time we see him. Which in my case will be tomorrow or Thursday. That's actually quite a hard place to stand in, eh? But loosen now. Have you got one of those dentist picks? I have, but I'm going to leave it alone, Mark. I think. Okay. I think if I think if I. Uh, know, After you sign this here, you might get a little bit of super glue in there, just to. I just your in there, just bits. A, I don't think they're all that wobbly, to be honest. It's just there's that's this bit here is probably still bark. Yeah. But I quite so, like so it. So after you sign in series, you just drop a little super glue down into the cracks. I will. That'll just uh stop it coming out when he goes in the house. So that's good. Let's go to ah jump up a grit or two. There we go. No sign of tool marks left, so all we're doing now is removing the marks from the previous sandpaper. So it shouldn't take nearly as long. As a good friend Steve's always said, no great pressure, just let the sandpaper do the work. I'll just tidy up in there, just holding that station with my thumb. Seth, so it's not spinning enough to... Hi, Seth. Oh, uh, Seth was in earlier. It was. Oops. I fell off the edge then. <laughs> I've done that before. What, falling off the edge? Falling off the edge, yeah. Oh, it's not a very, it's not a trait I kind of, I would recommend to everybody. 240 grit. Talia De Leo's in. Hi, Lionel. Hi, Lionel. Hi. Bonjour. Hi. Hi, Lionel. Bonjour. Uh, Louis is having to go and get his supper. Hi, Louis. Um, Take it easy, buddy. He's up into Call off the edge conclusion. again. Just uh, to mention, half past nine, Louis has got a new video coming out, which you have to wait until after Mark's premiere, which is quarter just... to ten, to watch. We don't have to, but you do. So look, that was too funny. No, I've heard a lot of people say they can't use Yorkshire grit on bottles, but it's not true. You can. I'm just about to prove it. So you get to have a look and see what this is like now, because I'm going to use some Yorkshire or some sanding sanding sealer, as the word I was looking for. Woodworm Paul joined. Hi, Woodworm Paul. Hi, Paul. Good evening, Paul. Put some sanding sealer in a yogurt tub. Put that on the lathe so it's covered in. 
overhead. I just got some sanding seal in there. Using a little pastry brush. Oh, I forgot something. Get the place nice and tidy. <laughs> Paul Cavanagh says, Brian, that, that, that wood looks awful. You should take it off your lathe and just dump it outside. He'll call past later and make sure its presence no longer offends you. <laughs> okay, Paul. <laughs> Paul doesn't live that far away from me. And in the grand scheme of things, just right in the corner and fighting. JP wants to know: Do you thin down your sanding sealer? Yes, this is uh, this is um, the sanding sealer from Hampshire Sheen. It's already pre-thinned, but I cheated this time because I felt it was actually a bit thick in the tin. It seemed to be a bit thicker than it normally is. So I did thin it a little bit using cellulose sanding thinners. Cellulose thinners. Sanding thinners? Sure, man. <coughs> it stinks a bit too. Right, let's just let that dry in a little bit. Pretty piece of Yeah, I think Martin uses uh, deodorized yeah. thinners in his sanding, um, sanding sealer as it comes. Yeah. So when you've added a bit, you'll get the smell from that. That's what it is. Yeah. So I like Martin's sand and cedar, but I think it's a bit too thin. You think? Well, I thought yeah. this was actually a little bit thick. That's why I th um, thinned it a little bit more. <clears throat> Maybe just after it. just depend thin, on thin what you're putting it on. I, I, I actually use Libron most of the time, and I use some of that neat, <coughs> some of it thin 50 50, and some of it thin 75 25. Right, let's go with that. We'll just leave that little bit of sandy sealer in there for the inside. And we'll use another piece of tissue. Oh, no expense spared. Look at that. And what we'll do is we'll just give that a wipe off. Wipe off any excess. Ben has just said, I think Danish oil would have worked well too. I think you're right. It would have. It would have, but the problem, my problem is, I don't really like Danish oil. And the stuff I've got is kind of yucky and horrible. I don't really like it at all. I'll need to buy some decent stuff. But Danish oil, you're right, is good on uh, bars and stuff, but you can have to put on half a dozen coats of it to get a, to get a shine on it. Yeah, Danish oil is not for shining, though, is it? Well, it can be if you if you put it can, goes, but it's, it goes shiny. But I don't think burp. I don't think uh, burp pieces warrant a shine. I think they should have a, a more satin, sort of a, more of a satin sheen. Well, see, that's just an artistic preference, isn't it? Yeah. Doug Miller's in. Good evening. Hi, Doug. So. Thank you, Doug. Douglas Mungham said, Dave, <coughs> I have muted. I think he might be expecting something. Mm. So is Nigel Foster. I'm getting that, I'm getting that funny uh, buzzing feeling in my headphones. It sounds like they're about to pack in, so I might just have to reset them. <laughs> yeah, can you? Just watch yourself back here. There we go. You'll sure it. I'm a glutton for punishment. Because is asking now, if I got my earbuds ready. Now, what I'll have to do is remove the Yorkshire grip from all these little bar inclusions. Or as the Americans call them, bottle inclusions. How did that ever come about? Because I can't spell proper. 
I've just gone and warned the neighbours. Oh. So you're saying that, but I'm, I'm hoping Joe's list. free on Wednesday because I'm going to be using Grit. And I'm just yeah, hoping she'll come and sing for me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold uh, on. This Wednesday, <laughs> what's this what's about Wednesday? Are you uh, now? Are you doing another live feed? No, I'm not doing a live till September now. Ah, oh. which apparently is on the 11th of April. <laughs> and well, that's all. Pity can be soft as your face with light brown, Yorkshire gritty. Now, there she is, of course, that all that grit, or not all the grit, but some of the grit will have disappeared down into those little inclusions. There's never anything heavy enough nearby to hit yourself with when you need it. <laughs> There's a lady just behind you, Mark. I don't know, you're in your workshop. Use your tool rest. I'll let you uh, when I next see you. Uh-huh. You said that last time. Yeah, I did, didn't I? And you, you must have a man or two handy around the workshop. I can't be bothered to get out of the chair. Oh, have you not got a mallet? So I'll send you one. Mm. What did Glenn say? Oh, no. She took pink boxing gloves and duffed him with them. No, she didn't, though. She forgot them. Well, she had the boxing gloves, but she just didn't use them. That's the thing. Uh, I've seen the boxing gloves at the unit. They were there. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. But of course, I got up there and I, I got off the list as soon as I arrived. Yeah, because you crawled. <laughs> Creep. Come on, Joe, I'll help you. I'll help you start to turn. Come on, I'll give you a lesson, Joe. Come on, over here, Joe. Yeah, crawler. You. I'm not Ellis. on the list, by the way. Do you not know? I'm not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Andy's come up with a good one. He said, Joe, every time you sing, it sounds better because I go deafer. <gasps> Shocking, that's all I can say. Shocking. And he said that even before he's moved further away. I know. Yeah, I know. Brave, Pickering's isn't Pickering's not that far away anyway, so. He's moving to Pickering. What was I going to say? Is Pickering famous for something, is it? No, oh, JP, I bought her pink boxing gloves. Had to be pink, so it didn't. So she didn't lose them in the car with all the other <coughs> oh, no, purple stuff. Yeah, cars coming down with purple stuff. Oh dear, I'll get my own. Speed, back. It. You will. You say that, Glenda. I do say that, and I will. Yeah. Yeah. Ninety-one people are watching you, Brian. What? Well, that's fabulous, guys. Thank you very much for coming in and saying hello. And Now, you can see there's whole lots of bits and pieces on there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. There's loads in there. I'll just blow them back out again. There's a little bit of compressed air. At 50 PSI. And that will clean out all the little inclusions again. Yeah, I don't have one of those in my workshop. Not yet. You just wipe them. Got your feet? Nope. Got the airbrush compressor, but that's it. Well, it takes it to be quite strong. The worst bit is a tissue. The grit comes out, no bother. It just blows out, and you just give it a quick rub, and it's gone. It's all these bits of tissue that stick to it. Yeah. So, I don't know if you guys can see that. There's an inclusion there which is full of, full of wax. Just give it a blow. A little bit of a rub and it's gone. So, once the grit has done its work, what you're left with mostly is just wax. It just takes a Gabriel said there's only 34 thumbs up. Hit that button, guys. Well, that would be nice if you're enjoying what you're seeing. If, you, if you're not enjoying what you're seeing, don't hit it. But if you're enjoying it, give it, a, give it a little thumb. And if you're not enjoying it, let us know why, and we'll try and sort something out. It's quite difficult for us guys who are uh, doing these lives to know whether 
of what to do to, to try and improve it because if nobody tells you anything, no constructive uh, advice or criticism, then how do we know how to improve any? Kind of get into a groove and think you're doing the right thing all the time. But Brian would criticise you, you all the be. time. Uh, you do, but I never listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> you and Mark do on Terry. Joe doesn't because Joe's nice. I am nice. But you and Mark probably do. <gasps> Say nothing. Yeah, that will. <gasps> so all the boys in the chat are glad that he's back, but nah, I'm not so sure. Hey, Dave, as you said, um, he'll put his thumbs up when you start turning resin. Are you still here? Right, so we're going to give a little bit of Hampshire Sheen. Hi, Gloss, just because, just annoy you, because <laughs> that's the mood of my tonight. I'm in the mood for doing things wrong. So, now we don't want this to go into all the a lot of inclusion, so we're just going to put a tiny little bit on. Boys, the boys just joined. Hi, Roy. Good evening, hey, Roy. Roy. Good evening, Roy. So the idea of doing this, and polishing it, is to highlight the difference between the nice smooth bits of wood and the inclusions. That's why I'm doing it. Get out. There we go. Starting to get fuel tacky because I didn't use very much. It's tacky already. And that's the signal that's ready to be buffed. Give it a go with that. Try a, bit of a, a little bit more speed if I can. So I'm getting a lot of vibration there at 760. So we'll just bike it off a little bit. Yeah, it's because that room's uh, not round. Bass from Real Simple Things is in. Good evening, Bass. Good evening. Welcome along, buddy. Pleased to see you along, mate. JP's having a pop-off for a little bit. He says he'll try to make it back before we finish. All right, JP. Thank you for coming in, buddy. I need to talk to All you, right, JP. Then. All right, then, JP. I need to have a word with JP about Saturday. The virtual craft is on this weekend coming. Isn't it? Uh, yep. And I have to... Uh, I'm on. <laughs> I think I'm on at 6 o'clock in the evening. But I need to confirm that with JP in case anything's changed so as I can set up my live stream. Grab him when he comes back. But I'll be back on Thursday to finish this, this piece here. Right. Just quickly check them. Well, inclusions for any piece of paper. Look in them. Ruth says it looks like a bowl from the Saxon times. She loves it. Right, that's that side done. So let's get the inside hollowed out and do something with this rim. 844. Uh, open that way, no, that way. How about balancing the rim before you take it off? Balancing the rim, the rim's not getting balanced, the rim's getting sanded. The rim's staying the way it is. But I'm going to do something on the rim now, just once I get it reversed. Oh, I dropped it. Oh. It's heavy, looks heavy. It's a big lump of wood. Put that on there and just hold it for now. Bring that up there. Take that up there. Oh, that's the wrong step center. That's this live step center. Might be better, eh? Boy's the boy oh. saying he sold his lathe today. He did. Ah, uh, what's the ulterior motive then, All right? Are you okay, Brian? Question mark, says Rob. Yes, I am. Ish. He's got a new one coming on the 28th. What did you get? 
we had this discussion. That wouldn't have happened with the Donald George Robinson. <laughs> <Robinsons. laughs> I can't afford one, guys. They're too dear. You can have two uh, record purges for chucks for the price of one SK114. Right, let's do something with this. So you say that, Brian, but you just spent the third of a price of an SK114 tonight on stuff you didn't need. It's, no, 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 sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> on stuff I didn't need. How much trouble you try to get me into? <gasps> you so and so I, you. I, I'd forgotten how much fun this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've noticed. He's bought a AT 406. Got 400 pounds. Ah, I knew you would off. go for the 406. The 406 is a lovely lathe. Really, really nice. That's the one that. Um, is that the one that P's got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wayne, Wayne's got one as well. Pete has one, Wayne has one. I have to say, in the size of workshop I've got, it is the perfect race. I would have the 508 if I had a bigger workshop. But, uh, the 406 fits nicely, I can walk around it and work around it. And it does everything. It does. Yeah. It's a good lift. That's maybe what I should have bought. We should get one as well. Yeah, that's bound to draw, draw a response from Michelle. Maybe not one you would like. Dave's asking how big your workshop be. It's uh, three meters by six meters. Which is exactly one third of the size that I really want. If I build one three times bigger than this, I would think it's exactly one third of the size I really want. Let me have a little look at the shape of that now and see what I'm <laughs> A bit strong, Paul, but Paul Glavener has said, Richard, 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 Brian said the wood you supply him is awful and he hates it and he hates you. I'd never <laughs> say anything that mean, so can I have first pick of all future wood instead of him? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a kiss ass there, Paul. Yeah, so the thing was that the last time Richard was down, he was at Paul's first. And then he appeared at mine and all this bottle stuff appeared out the back of his car. Maybe there's a something going on there. Right, that's all right. We're happy with that now. I just need to do a little bit. Uh, Andy, the woman no, there said, that, Pete, your door open, you have extra space. I actually built a deck outside the workshop, which is another three right, metres or six metres. Just go remove the space plate now, I guess, once I find the screwdriver. There it is. So I have a flat workspace outside as well, but yeah, it's cold. Do you use it much? Suck it up, buttercup. <clears throat> um, I use it for chainsawing, yeah. It's cold. <laughs> it's cold. Suck it up, buttercup. Listen to that. I mean, outside. <laughs> You're a gag, if you If you go outside when it's cold, wet and raining, it's almost like being inside much work workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> quite that cold, but... <laughs> So I'm just going to leave this tailstock up here just for a bit of added security. Don't really need it, but I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I want to leave a bead. Oh, let's go to this camera. I'm going to leave a little bead in here, but I'm going to flatten this off now first, and then I'm going to cause the bead. So I'm going to go to a smaller roll gauge. And I'm just going as to bring this in. As you've got a modest-sized uh, workshop, Pete, uh, Gunny said that you won't be wanting the VB. Oh no, if you had the VB, it'd be a new workshop. <laughs> I 
Bailey Woodworks is in. Hi, Chris. Good That's evening, not strong Chris. enough. Go to the three eights. How many Doom bars now, Pete? Still on his second one. Nah. That tool rest is miles too high. Why you and you tell me that? Yeah, I think well, we, we thought you were trying to pioneer a new technique. <laughs> okay, fine. Abandoned that, that last. So a little curve in here. They're there, and that's where the bead is going to be. I'll just start to form the bead now. It's that piece of the rim that has the seam all the way around. It's secure. Yes. Curious it is. What was that question about it's secure? He said, is that piece of the rim that has the seam all the way around, it's secure. That's about here, you mean? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Seems to be. <laughs> so he turns it on now and it flies off. I don't know yeah. what that will have been. That's okay, I'm standing out of the line of fire anyway, guys, so if it does It'll go, be uh, fine. That way. Ah, you're grand. back. Oh, yeah, I am, yep. So I just want to take a look. How many doom bars, Pete? Finishing cut. Um, I'm back to open the third one, actually. <gasps> third one, Brian. That's okay. No, Brian's on track. The outside always takes longer than the inside. So I'll just round that off a little bit and get down to the same depth there. And I'll come back to that in a minute. Now what I want to do is get the same the same height there as is here. There's uh, some talk in the chat about a rolled edge. Yeah, my infamous rolled edge. Yeah, you're not going to roll this edge. Well, you could roll it with um, sanding, I suppose. Right, now. We'll make this bit a little bit smaller. It's a bit big. It's a bit pointy. It is a bit pointy, is right, Mark? What I might do is use my beading and pattern tool as a negative rake scraper, if you like. And now we have to get rid of the tail stock. Let me just get the uh, right. elbow stabber. Yes, mate. Five to nine. That's okay, mate. <laughs> Is that the fourth one? Nah, no, sorry. it's the third one. Third. Oh, that third is one. the third one. Yeah, we're going to fight tonight. Well, like, remove the elbow stabber here. There we go. Yeah. Back up on the chalk, buddy. 
Let's make a nice sharp edge there. Is that the right camera for you guys? You okay with that camera? Yeah, yes, camera. Yes, fine. Good. Nice sharp edge there, and I'm going to flow that edge on out. It has a little bit of a depression there, and the reason I'm putting that in there is so you can put your thumb in there. Still a bit big, that I think. It will sand, however. There we go, that's better now. Now, I want to leave a little step there, so I'll just use the point of this. I'll leave a little step, just like that. That's where the lid's going to sit. With a little bit of luck. And now we're going to haul out the rest of this. I'm going to go my half inch bow gauge. <coughs> but first and foremost, I'm going to change the tool rest. So Mark. Yeah. That's too big. Does this lid need a, a tenon on a mortise? Oh, I was thinking no. I was thinking about That's using a, a flying tenon, yeah. Yeah. Flying tenon, yeah. So I'm going to use a scraper first because this bit here, there's a, a nasty tool mark in there. So I'm just going to use my little round nose scraper. Negative rate scraper, just take that off. Let's have a look at that. Still a little bit there. Not being a hurry. It's good now. Uh, Yorkshire Kid says, Tall Mark? Surely not. Surely not. Where's that? Oh, there. Beating a pattern tool again just to finish this bottom corner. Oh, yeah, there's always tool marks. Lewis is suggesting keep checking that rim piece every time you take some off it. This rim piece, this. Yep, it's okay still. Just need a tiny little bit more in here. Greg Daxon, he says hello from Canada. Hi Greg. Hi Greg. I wonder should I make that a little bit smaller. John Scarper is asking how you sharpen your negative rig scraper. I sharpen it 60... Um, 60-30. So I've just made that uh, bead a little bit smaller. It's too big. Aesthetically, it's not very pleasing to my eye. So I'm going to make it smaller. So 60 on the bottom, 30 on the top. Gives it an included angle of 90 degrees. The work learner's asking, is it better to get a proper scraper? Can I grind a cheap skew and use one of them instead? Yeah, <coughs> but because a skew is not as thick. You, want, you want weight in a better scraper. scraper. Yes, the bigger, yeah. the bigger the bar here, the better your scraper will be. Now that's the that's the inch and a half one. And that's the one inch one. You can see the difference in the thickness and bar. Oh, why? You know, so this is for light work. This is for heavy work. The heavier it is, the better it will be. If you look at the one Zed uses, <laughs> that he kind of handmade from a. I can't believe you just said that, Glenn. Tractor spring. Glenn said it's the best thing you can do with a skew, Andy. I can't believe that. I think what you did with your skew, sticking them in the ceiling like that, is pure art. That little edge just needs to go down a little bit more, too, just to line them up. That'll do. So we're just kind of finessing this to try and get it pleasing to my eye. I don't really mind whoever else looks at it. As long as I like it. That's the important thing, isn't it? TJ oh, yeah. Turnings in. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. 
Good evening, Terry. That was, that was a um, short what, Where it matches Mark's sketch, it matters, matters most. Does Terry want to come in and say hello? Terry, you want, do you want to join the earworms? Shall I send him a link? You can, yep. The woodwork learner says, cheers, he'll just save the skew for opening paint tins. <laughs> well, I think that's what they were designed for originally. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. The skew is the most wonderful tool in your, your arsenal of tools. Right, so yeah. let's, uh, let's think about hollowness and beast out now. That's good. I like that. Just get my tool rest right. So one that right in the middle, just like that. Switch that on. Turn the speed up a little bit. Oh, that's too far. Right there. And just go take that nub away from the middle first. That's quite satisfying. Following is satisfying, I have to say. Now, because this is only doing uh, just under, so I'll go try and get that to 700. That's 700 revs. So right in the middle there, that's doing 700 revs. But out here, it's doing far more. So the feet per second <coughs> is far more out here. So well, it's easier to cut out here. And as you rotate your tool over, and start to head towards the middle, you actually need to slow down the speed of your cut. So the speed of advance of the tool has to be slower. I took too much cut there, so I'll go back out. And So up in an arc towards 12 o'clock and then head back down to the centre and finish on the left wing just about there. Again, John, John Scarborough's having to uh, go. He says bye all. Hi John. Thanks for coming bye, in. John. Bye John. How dark it is in the wood. Yep, in the centre. It might lighten up again in a minute. Yeah, will do. There's no deep you go, of course. <clears throat> go too deep, have a light shine right away, right away with who's in the back of it. I want to get this side quite straight. Terry can't come in. At the moment, Ruth's watching Terry. He can't, that's okay. Let's just try and get rid of that knob again. Because the grain's going in all sorts of directions here, it's quite hard to get that to come out of there. Now, I'm going to go to this camera just for a second. Nah, uh, tool stop. Tool stop. So, as soon as I can get this edge nice and straight, oh, you can't really see that. That's can't see it, but... Yep. Um, try that one. I am hoping to get the tool right away across here because what I, want, what I want to do is get the bevel here pointing in the direction I want it to go. So, that's the bevel lined up. And I'm just pushing it straight forward now. I'm not pushing it so much, but just assisting it to go forward. Bring the tool handle back across towards me. And as it comes into my side, head it up towards 12 o'clock. And then as it passes there, passes the middle of the, the uh, cut, start to bring it back down towards the middle. 
we'll take the tool closed and it should end up on the left wing, just about there. That's how that's so you're pu pushing up the length of the tool, aren't you? Yep. Yep. Up there. And then back down towards the center. Got loads of room here. Go again. So we're getting a lot of vibration there now. Because this is a three inch bowl gauge and it's just hanging over the edge of it a bit too far. So we'll just back off the rest. cut a little bit. Yeah, I'll move the tool rest in a second. And I'll show you how to combat that. So that little vibration can be combated by sticking the end of your tool rest in there. Richard Freeland says, put the lathe in reverse, cut the far side. No need to reach across the bed. Good, yeah, that would be an ideal solution. You could turn it and turn it in this direction. Um, reverse, says, as long as your chuck is locked on. You're correct. <coughs> Glenn has said that approach will let you cut a more acute, acute transition with a swept back grind. Dave Oti is having to go. He's got an early start. Bye, Dave. Bye, Dave. But in the only. subtext that he didn't write, it did say he would have stayed if you were doing resin. What was Glenn saying about the uh, the different edge? That approach will let you cut a more acute transition with a swept back grind instead of having to switch to a bottom feeder. Okay. Well, I'd just switch to a bottom feeder. Because the bottom feel that you can get the, you can rub the, no, barely, not rub the bevel, but glide the bevel across and then just push it across the bottom. Take your time. Two wrists a fraction too high for that. Yep. Two wrists is touching. So let's just try to get a little bit of finishing cut on the inside there. <coughs> Keith Jarvis is replying to Richard about uh, running the lathe in reverse, saying he's not seen it done, so he's stayed away from doing it. It's perfectly fine to do, Keith. As I said, you must make sure your chuck is locked on so it can't cut and screw. Um, it... Just, <sighs> it Probably won't do anyway, as long as your cuts are gentle, but, you know, safe, better safe than sorry. Yep. Um, give it a go on an easy piece and try it. All these ideas and techniques, try something easy. Put an yep. easy piece of wood on, give it a go. No. Roy's the boys, uh, Brian, what size gauge was that? That was it. The last one was this um, half inch. It? No, this oh, one. That was your half inch. Half inch, wasn't it? This is a half inch. Yeah. Half inch UK size, so it's five eighths US. Yep. All right, five five eighths bar with a. Would work, Leonard. Uh, bottom feeder grind is a traditional grind or an English grind or a straight over grind. You want to see it? Usually sixty degrees or more. Usually quite this is this, is this is sixty degrees. Let me go to close up zoom there. So that that's a sick oh, that's a dirty. That's a sixty degree grind on there. And it makes life nice and easy because you can rub the bevel and there's no danger of you can actually push it straight across, you see. That's that's instead of having to come up and come back down and change wings, you can just go straight. The only across. thing you have to watch with the bottom feeder is because it's a straight over grind. The corners are further forward than a swept back grind. 
This this upper wing here. Yeah, if yeah. you turn it over, you if you catch it, you'll know you've caught it. Oh yes. <laughs> But it's actually quite that, e it's, it's actually quite easy to use, guys. I'm quite happy using it. I did think it was going to be difficult, but it's not. Oops, bring that back in again. The Yorkshire Gate says I have all my gouges ground, swept back to find different ways of going round the transition. Yep. Everybody has their own <laughs> methods of getting places. Mm. Yep. And there's Thanks. nothing wrong with that. Now, that's how that's how the the uh, the skills of the hobby that we we all know and love develops over the years. The so size and shape of the bowl will affect the size and shape of that transition, Correct. and you're in control of that, so you can modify that to suit. But there's different tools to do different things. Some do it better, some do it the same. Um, I'm in reality. If you're like me and a little bit on the lazy side, you'll carry on with a sweat back all the way through. But um, just sometimes having the, having the, the choice of tools there gives you the options. Douglas is saying he's got the RP uh, SC4, record power SC4. SC4, shock, yep. Without a hole for a locking grub screw. Um, What's that? It's, uh, no, hold on a minute. It didn't all have them. If yes, you've got you nowhere to put a, a grub screw, then um, avoid reverse turning. Yeah. Reverse sanding's fine. Reverse turning, as I said, as long as you're gentle with your cuts and you don't get a catch, it's going to be okay. But it's a risk. It is a risk. And as uh, I quite like to remind people, Health and safety in your workshop is your responsibility. Doesn't matter what anybody else does, you're responsible for what you do. But we try our best to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we try our best to show you the the safest <clears throat> techniques, but sometimes we uh, take shortcuts as well as everybody else. Yeah. Can we change camera? Sorry, mate. You can't pixelate it as well. Just want to see if it's the camera or the internet. It's the internet. It's the internet. It'd be Matthew. Oh, no. <laughs> Matthew's home. Glenn said, you calling me lazy, Pete? No, nah, not not at the moment, Glenn. We'll do that in a couple of weeks when we're face-to-face, -face, mate. Over a couple of beers. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gerard is having to go. His head's spinning. He's going to go and have a lie down. All right, Gerard. Take it easy, buddy. I know the film. That'd be like, that'd be like Eddie Hall facing up to Thor. Right, that should be good enough in there now, I think. Should have power sanded that, really. Let's have a quick look at that, see what it's like. And your camera's back in focus again, so... Well, Cheers. Not no, pixelated, no, shall I say. Well, put it out of focus again, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite happy with that transition just there. There's a bit of a straight in there. We have to fix that. That's where what Glenn is it? right, and the bottom feeder is wrong. Quarter past nine. Because yeah. you're doing it as two different things, you do tend to get um, the wrong angle on transition. It's not quite as smooth. Just a little, there's just a little flat piece just in here. Yeah. So we'll use a three inch bow. So you're running with just, one tool and across with the other. Yeah. Just try and blend that in a wee bit. See if I can. See if I can get that to go right. Paul Finley's having to go. See you later, Paul. Being mindful with my left hand does all the time as well. Robert Robert Robertson is in. Hey, Robo. Hi, Robo. Hey, Robo. How you doing, buddy? So you can get in all the way across with a sweat bike wing if you want.
Take it out of the way till I rub my finger in there. That's better. I'm happier with that now. I was going to suggest, uh, Brian, you might be Power better power sound than that. Yeah. Yep. I totally agree. It'll be quicker. It'll be a mic, mic quicker, I would think. There we go. Two batteries. Should be good. If you angle your drill down a bit more at the back. Yeah, they can hear you, me. Yeah, that's better. Nah, I nah, know. Going in, going in a bit straight. Yeah, he's got the notification that Mark Green got a premiere in 30 minutes. Um, you'll, you'll bring up the link again. Uh, it's quarter past nine, is it? Yep. It's, yeah, quarter past nine. 20 past nine, actually. It's okay. Good time. Yeah, for quite a half nine, anyway, so... Looks good now. It's solid enough. It looks like it's a big crack there, but it's quite solid. Let me just give that a quick blowout with a new hose. Yes, Link. Thank you very much. And I was only notified after I uploaded it, but this is actually my 100th upload. Hey, aren't I? Well done, mate. One, two, three. Ian Cook's hey, asking, hello. are there any benefits in running the drill in reverse when sanding? Um, Can be. It's a cost Similar. because most battery drills run slower in reverse than they do forward. Yeah. Um, my tendency, if I want to do that, is I'll run the lathe backwards and the drill forwards. Yeah. I think that'll do. One more grit and we're flying. Oops, I'll be on the floor. Very dry and dusty. Thank you, Doug. Alex. Yeah, I will congratulate Mark, but I think having 100 videos uploaded is just a sign of a misspent youth, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100. 
I think there's Wayne not post something today. He, he's at 450 or something. So yeah. That's no surprising when he does three lives a week. Eh? <laughs> three lives a week and uh, at least one video a week on top of that. So he does work hard. He does. Yeah. I find it difficult yeah. to come up with an yeah, idea so one Mark. live a year. Yeah. And so does Mark. He works That's only because of the internet. Well, I haven't got any internet, so you know. Right, there's a little bit there that needs sanded. So I'm just going to have to work on that for a second. It's holding you Douglas, back. Um, I said, Pete, you must be getting close to 10. I think I am, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got about six done, I think. He said, no hurry. <laughs> Pizza, no hurry. I don't know why that I can't get that bit sanded. It's right there. That's good. Now, I'm not going to bore you guys with this bit because I'm going to have to sand all this edge. I just want to show you a little bit of it. Come to there. I'm just going to sand this edge so that it kind of looks like it's not being cut. Richard Phelan's asking, are you going to leave the chainsaw marks on that straight edge? No, that's no, on this straight edge here. No, that's why I'm doing this. I'm trying to take the chainsaw marks out of it and just make it look yeah, like it's... It and I'll sand that later when I'm working on that. Oops, I've just dropped that. I just want you guys to have a look at the inside of this so you see what it looks like now. So I'll put the sanding seal on it. Andy, and Robert Lerner is. said, I must admit, sanding with a hand-powered drill is hard work. Yeah. 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 Oh, I need my little tray. Change camera, bud. Keep things tidy. Yep, we'll do. Get the towel. There we go. I'll just throw some of that in there, and that should help that pop out a bit. Wow. So the idea was to try and leave it almost looking like a natural edge, but it's obviously not. Some of it's natural, but I didn't want a round bowl again. So that's why I've left it kind of like that. I'm just going to stick some sanding so on there, but I'm going to sand that obviously. Hey, not actually, it looks quite nice. Well, got a rough saw yeah. edge on it. That doesn't do any harm. Then add a bit of texture for somebody to feel. <sighs> when they pick it up first. This little brush is not much good. The hairs are falling out of it all over the place. It's a cheap brush from the range, eh? Yeah. There we go. Probably cheap brushes. It is a bit. And we'll just give that a wipe down with the sporting life now. Just to take the excess off. As they say. And the idea of the little rim is just for the lid to sit in here. So I have no idea. Is that going to be um, Thursdays be or are you going to do that in video? Two. Part two will be on Thursday. I'm going to play with this now tomorrow. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe modify it a wee bit or make this thinner or something. <coughs> I don't know. We'll see. But that's the basic shape. That's what I was kind of aiming for. So I'll just pop it off the lathe for now. Once I've marked the jaws. I'll leave Alex the of Wood and Things have said, I might be in a position later this year to upgrade my lathe. Ooh. I've been looking around. I'm drawn to the Stratos MIDI Pro. Anybody in the chat got any feedback on this lathe? Um, I'll just take it out. Basically, the only time... I did a lot of research before bolt mine. Stratos lathes are excellent. Yep. 
Your reputation precedes them. They do. Mike Walt swears by them. He thinks they're fabulous. They are quite Mike Walt will be earworming for one of us lot again soon yep. when he's not working. Or he will also be doing a live, depending on his shifts and, and how it works out, on a Sunday fairly soon. If you've got any Stratos questions, ask he's Mike. Demand. So if I go there, put that tail stunt camera on, I just tap that down a little bit. Oh, Richard Feeling's got a straddles as well, so he can give some feedback. He has. He has, indeed. So there's our little bowl thus far, part one. Ah, oh, Stephen's just wow. done. So it's quite it's chunky, it's heavy. The outside is like a leopard skin almost. It's a full uh, bit chunky. Lovely, yeah. There's a bit of refinement to get done on this this inside edge here, but that's okay. We'll get that done, and then we're going to make a lid out of this, just like that. I think we are anyway. If it fits. What dude? Stevens just turned up. I know. Just Stephen, as I'm finishing. Good evening, Stephen. I'm being so it's a good thing. Um, if that bit of bar doesn't do, I might have another piece. Oh, there's another piece. I'll have another piece of bar that might do the job. We'll make a lid out of one of these. So, that's it for tonight, guys. Let me bring the worms back in again. If I can get the mouse to work. It's starting to sound like Terry. <laughs> there we go. So there that's it is, guys. That's perfect timing, Brian. That's the remains of Cam 3. Look at Good. that. Excellent. So there it is. There's a little bow. That's what it looks like. It's quite chunky on the outside. I might actually refine that wee bit. I don't know if it's really too chunky. I don't know. Maybe give it more I like of a... the shape of it. More of a rim. Looking for it's... a couple of days before you do anything with it. Yeah, well, I. It's kind of organic shape, so we'll see how it goes. But we'll be finishing this on Thursday at lunchtime. And we'll see how it goes. Thanks very much for coming in, guys. I appreciate it. It's half past nine, Mark. When is your run, Mark? Now, 9.45. At 9.45. So you get 15 minutes, grab a cup of tea uh, or whatever, a beer or whatever. And uh, we'll, get upstairs. See, we'll see you all in March. Um, Premier. Thanks very much for coming in, guys. Thanks to Pete for his assistance this evening. Welcome, mate. Cheers, everyone. Thanks to Joe for her singing. You're welcome. Will, will you be back on Hi, Thursday, everyone. Joe? Will you be um, back on Thursday? Yes. Yes. Good. I might miss uh, the very, very beginning, but I should be yeah, in. That, that's all right. And thanks to Mark. Welcome back, big lad. You're welcome. Uh, and uh, we'll see you all on Thursday. Who's on tomorrow? Anybody? Wayne's on tomorrow, isn't he? No, tomorrow's no, Tuesday. No, it's going to be tomorrow's Keith Tuesday. Or Andy. Right, Keith or Andy, uh, lunchtime and, and evening. Keith, Andy or Rich, I'm not sure which, on the evening tomorrow. Yeah. And then we have uh, Wayne on Wednesday. Wayne's on Wednesday. Then it's you on, on Thursday. And then me back on Thursday. Yeah. All right, guys. Come see you on Thursday. Thanks very much for coming in. Uh, good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Cheers, all.